Let's talk about 79 Daytona 500. Do you remember that race? Yes, sir. Uh, one of my favorite races. I think, to me, the most important race in history of NASCAR because the first you know, flag-to-flag televised yeah. race, aside from this one race in Greenville Pickens in 1971, that was actually the first flag-to-flag race. Uh, Short track. Yes. Yeah, sh- okay. So it's 1979. The whole world's watching. The whole East Coast is snowed in. Everybody's in their living rooms uh, watching NASCAR. And uh, they had probably a, had three channels. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. So we had, we were, in, you know, our sport got introduced on a big level to a lot of people who'd never seen it before. Richard goes out and wins the race. Um, but to me, you know, the fights wild and cool and and people talk about the fight down in turns three and four the most popular most well-liked driver in the sport wins the race what was it like to be around the sport at that time what was it like because i mean it you know it's different much much different than it is today take us back to 1979 daytona and and what it was like to well let's let's go back a little bit further now okay okay? we had a good year in 66 Mm -hmm. 67 48 races, he wins 27 of them. Mm-hmm. 71, I'm just bringing up years. I had a good year in 70 with the Superbird. Gets hurt at Darlington. Good year in 71 and goes on, you know, and uh, he's won 16 years in a row. 78, we don't win a race. The last race of the year, they flag us the winner at Atlanta. And later on, they rescore and give uh, declare Donnie the winner. So we don't win a race that year. So then we go to Daytona in 79, what you're leading up to. Yeah. And uh, car's not very fast, driving good, gets the white flag. And there's been a ca- late caution. Uh, I don't know how late, maybe 15, 20 laps to go or something, I don't know. But Donnie and Kale just run off and leave us, you know. And he comes by, gets the white flag, and I said, uh, remember that's the white flag because there's been some pulled in on the white flag, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, Did not you feel very, like you had to tell him that? I did. I don't know where I had to or not, but yeah. I said, you know, we're running for third, and and uh, Daryl's right behind you, and Foyt's right behind Daryl, and I, and I didn't tell him how far behind, but it was 17 seconds back, and then all of a sudden the grandstand goes wild, you know, and what the world's happened, and of course the cameras have a hard time picking up him, you know, coming through. You know the story. Was you at home or do you? I was. I don't. I have no clue where I was at. I was four. <laughs> four or five years old i don't believe i was ever that young <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh we went on and won the race you know, and what a big deal it was for not winning and uh of course i was we dad a while you know and that's never won a race we didn't win a race we finished second a couple of times and one of them they had a caution that probably was staged where we would have won riverside but we didn't so uh but stayed with him for about six months, and yeah. then Austin sold the place to Stacy, and of course he didn't like getting along with that so, group. Yeah, so. so let's talk about that. So um, you are going to leave Richard in eighty one. Why? We had we'd gone to Daytona in nineteen eighty one. Maurice said I can get more power out of a Chrysler, and we're downsizing the bodies. You know that yeah. that that year, and a lot of unknowns. Give credit to Bobby Allison and. Waddell and for bringing that Le Mans down. You sure. know the story on that. They built the Le Mans. And, uh, but we go down there with a, I don't even know what the name of the daggone Chrysler was. Go down for a test. And Richard said, now don't get too excited if I don't have a good speed because we don't know what this thing's going to do. So I think the speed was like 175 or something. We were pretty excited. He said, wait a minute, that's wide open. Mm-hmm. Who was the boy in South Carolina that built chassis? Not but they give us front. He give us three chassis, front yeah. steer, and we'd never messed with them before. Laughlin's, yeah. yeah. And uh, our car, it was driving good. And he went out, and we put a lower gear in it, and didn't pick it up enough. So he went out for a plug check, and cut it off on the back stretch, and didn't even coast to come in. You know, he had to start it back up. So we put it on the trailer and come home and put a Buick body on it. Went back and Le Mans, and then they come in with that Le Mans, and there's changing. I mean, during a a practice, they'd change a rule on what spoiled anything you wanted to drive the cars. You know, and our car was driving good because we'd been through all the front end stuff we'd learned from Larry Radcap with Chrysler, you know, the Castor and Camber games and all that stuff. And our car was driving good. And uh, 
we went along with their chains, but we kind of kept our mouth shut. And that Le Mans, they was trying to slow it down because they had everybody covered. And then we got lucky and won that race too. Yeah. <laughs> but how, how did you end up getting split up with Richard? Uh, it was kind of a family thing. We didn't talk about it. It certainly wasn't the money, and it certainly wasn't Richard. It was just what was happening in a lot of families, I guess. Yeah. And uh, Richard, we sat down and had a conversation about it, and uh, he wanted me to stay. And at the point in time, I just didn't figure I could. And we never lost our friendship or none of that stuff. And then it was uh, it was a different experience. It would uh, put me out on a limb by myself, you know what I mean. But uh, were you eager, were you uh, kind of excited though to do something different? You'd been working? no, it was a sad time for sad. both of us. Yeah. So I imagine it was sad, you know, because you'd been with Richard for so long. But at the same time, like. You're going to go try something new. Man, you've been doing this deal with Richard forever, <laughs> right? It's yeah. all you've done. <clears throat> you know, and you had good success when you when you left. You know, you won a championship with Terry Labonte, but... So that was I, later on. Yeah, not that much later on, just two or three years. <laughs> um, so there was, you know, there wasn't any excitement, I guess, at all. Well, it was a, it was certainly a challenge. It was a challenge for my family, you know, because our families was close. You know, I had kids, you know, and and uh, we all we all mingled all the time. Went did to you church have to? Again. Yeah, but did you have to move? No, I drove. <laughs> I so, never, you know, and you know, uh, and then I went back, you know, and. Richard wanted me to come back in 86. and well, You're skipping over some stuff. Okay, let me have it. Yeah, so <laughs> you worked with Dad in 81. Yeah. Or, was it 81? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was working with him like? It was okay. You can he, shoot me straight. Well, they had a pretty good team, and I had to, I had to go in, and so, Osterlin wanted me to wedge my way in, and I had to be careful. You know, Doug Riker and uh, – Doug was a young kid, Roland. Yeah, Roland Velotica, yeah. you know, he – He was I'm a not GM. Sh- yeah. He, so Doug was credited as the crew chief when they won a championship in 1980. Yeah. But he's only 20 years old. Yeah, I know. You know, he's just a kid, and I think he even knew then that he wasn't gonna. You know, he it wasn't his it wasn't his job going forward. Maybe I don't know. You you worked with him uh, in 81. No, he's that's okay. He you seemed know okay with yeah. like sort of sliding over and and letting you know almost like yeah somebody else needs to take over. This is a little bit too much for me right now. This. I can't even believe him and Daddy won a damn championship with no more supervision than that. Well, but you know it. Uh, in eighty, but your daddy was a leadership. I he mean, was. he he, yeah. he was the leader, you know, he, to yeah. a certain. I and, imagine uh, he called the shots. But uh, so he, you uh, come in there, and uh, yeah, it was we was going okay, and then when uh, I don't know what kind of trouble Osterlin got in, but he sold to Stacy. Sold to Stacy, yeah. And your dad didn't accept some of the people that Stacy brought in at all, you know. And so the it, thing I was thinking about, and maybe you could shed some light on this. Um, Dad and Neil Bonnet were great friends. Yeah. Neil drove for Stacy some in the seventies before J D came in and started putting his name on everybody's okay. car. So I think Neil might have got with Daddy and said, This you don't want to deal with this dude. See, I, I was called. I didn't know I mean I you know, but your dad your dad would be on the wanted list for people to drive for him, you know, Bud Moore, yeah, he drove for Bud Moore and he drove yeah. for a lot of people, you know, and So how did you and Daddy get along? I think we got along okay, you know, and, and still did after that. I'll tell you some funny stories on that if you want to hear it. Sure. But, but he played hard, you know what I mean? You, you know that. Yeah. You did. Well, uh, I don't know that. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I'll tell you one that's kind of funny. You know, he come up to me one day and he said uh, Kyle was driving and you was driving. Your sister Kelly was driving son. Mm-hmm. He said, I've got trista problems Richard's got. I said, what's that? He said, i got two kids that can't drive. No disrespect to you. <laughs> <laughs> but that was your dad. And then um, what year did he win the 500? 98. 98. Okay. The next race was Rockingham. So we're down at Rockingham. And uh, me and John Andretti's driving for us, me and Richard and John, some more standing there. And he come by and he, he was awfully famous for grabbing you on the cheek. Do you ever do you that? No. Yeah, he, probably. Gra- he probably grabbed me and he said, I'd whoop you now. I've won the 500. I said, Son, you're six behind because Richard had <laughs> won seven. Yeah. And John Andretti laughed. And John, had, he, I know John laughed longer to make you mad. It didn't make him <laughs> mad, but it caught him yeah. off guard, you know. So, And, uh, you know, one time he called me over at Charlotte and he 
pulled his jacket off and showed me a big bruise on his arm. Said, "Look what you done to me." I said, "You shouldn't play with me." And you know, and, right, yeah, y'all, but, y'all was rough with each other in the garage, pinching each other yeah, on the shoulder and stuff. Yeah, but he grabbed no, me a few times. Who did? You. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he grabbed you by the elbow, and he's got. He knows where all these pressure points are, and it's about taking. That take, was survival points. Then. Take your knees out. Okay. That's yeah. that army uh, training coming back out. No, it was survival training. Survival training. <laughs> <laughs> he knew where you get, where it hurts. Yeah, but no, it's it's been a long ride, you know. Yeah. And uh, of course, it was a pretty good team there. But you, no disrespect to your dad or nothing. He just never accepted no. Stacy yeah. coming in. He got out of there as fast as he could. Yeah. So what did you do? You stayed. You finished. Yeah, I had to a while, and and uh, Stacy was as good as to me as he could be, you know. And he uh, he was in he was in the coal business yeah. somehow, and it just took a dump there and if it just stayed on i think we might have been okay i don't know but yeah. he he had big plans he did he had his, his name on about 10 different cars there at one time i know yeah. but the first time i met him was at i think it was daytona the fourth of july was our first race and uh him and his wife invited me and my wife mary out and they took us to one of the big places restaurants up in one of the big i don't even know what hotel or something down there and we're sitting there, and his wife sitting there and had a ring on about that big around. Pear-shaped diamonds, yeah. not all one stone. And poor old Mary, <laughs> she said, that's the most beautiful ring I've ever seen. Is it real? <laughs> I couldn't believe she said it. It was, you know, so yeah. at the time. But, but when, you know, it just, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, there's just so many memories, you know what I mean. So you got, um, you, when you left the two-car, uh, did you go to Hagen's, Billy Hagen's? To uh, what? Who owned the forty four? Billy Hagen. Yeah. So did you go straight there from the two? Yeah. So they call you up. Billy had been working with me. You know what I mean? And um, no. What have you been doing? We won a couple of races with uh, Tim Richmond in the we, two. In the two in was Stacey. Billy part of that? No. Oh. It was uh, so still Stacy. Yeah. So the did Billy call you? You know I don't know how it happened. Probably at the racetrack or something. Oh. You know what I mean? He just you, you'd be in the garage and he might walk up and I, I don't know how yeah. it took place but it would you know that long drive to charlotte was getting old you know and I, I when i lay down in level cross i'm about 100 yards from where i was born the house ain't there but when i lay down at, at night i'm so you left the two car to get closer uh, somewhat but i was ready to get out of there too you know uh-huh. what i mean and uh where st- was Hagen's shop at right out of high point and it was about uh maybe 15 or 20 minutes away That's compared to about bad, an hour yeah. and Half, you know. And they had a good team. Yeah, but see, Terry, the last race in Riverside, which Tim won, Terry got hurt real bad. He did, yeah. In 82. And then in 83 is when I went with him. And uh, they had a they had a decent team. Dewey Live and Good doing the motors. And Bob Labonte, Terry's daddy, one of the hardest working men I've ever been around. You know, and Pete Wright. And, and you know, a little bit later on, I brought on some people. And uh, – we picked up Budweiser where we were going to get their feet wet. And then we know it was only going to stay one year. And then they was going with Junior with two cars. And I got acquainted with some of them people, you know. And uh, so they left us and went with Junior in 84. And we got lucky and got Piedmont Airline and won the championship. And I kind of laid it on the Budweiser people, you know what I mean. We wasn't good enough for you. We only won the championship <laughs> for that, you know. And uh, But it was, it was a great year. But uh, – I think I think it took I think it took Terry a little while to get over that wreck, and we we finally started gelling in '83 about halfway through the season, and we didn't do great. But then, and we didn't do all that great as far as winning races in '84, but we was Y'all awful were consistent. So consistent, yeah. Golly, yeah. And uh, I mean, so because I remember I was going to the racetrack. And just remember, y'all never had any problems. Well, we was going. We could have sewed it up in Atlanta and broke a god darn crank, you know. Yeah. And Daryl, would Junior had eliminated himself. Your dad had eliminated their self, mm-hmm. you know, in points. And uh, maybe Ricky Rudd, two or three more, and left us going to Riverside racing Harry Gant, you know. And I didn't know we had the championship sewed up till the white flag, and that's when I knew it was. And and that was big for me. Don't get me wrong, you know, to win another championship well, yeah. i mean i would say is it fair to say that there was even some maybe a uh, semblance of vindication because no I, I don't think i took it like that because everywhere you want it everywhere you want 
everywhere you went, you wanted to win, and and the championship was the the goal. You yeah, know. I understand that. But how difficult is it to compete against your family? Well, per se, you know, me and Richard's mother and my mother were first cousins, so. People said, "Well, y'all cousins." I said, "Yeah, sometimes, you know." I kind of, <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I tell it in front of him. And of course, when he says he's won four hundred races, hadn't been for me. That's still a big conversation piece, yeah. you know. So, but that's. Uh, but we've all. I, I, I don't know life without knowing Richard. So in nineteen eighty four, you know, while you're winning the championship, uh, while you're having all this success without Richard, you know, what was the dynamic like? Like, did y'all speak? Yeah. Did y'all talk? All the time. So y'all were talking. Cause oh, I'm, yeah. No. I'm still sort of intrigued by the family relationship after the after you left. Is it? I, I can't tell. It feels like you were being intentional to not get it into was, the details. Let, let me put it straight like this. It was not me and Richard. Okay. Does that clear up a little yeah, bit of it? for sure. Well, it's certainly uh, – okay. it, that's intriguing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, but it was certainly not me and Richard. And, what, and, and it put a stress on our families, too, you know, to a certain degree, you know, because our kids are going to school, you know, and sure. all this stuff. We go to church together, you know. That. But that explains why it would have been not as difficult to compete against Richard because uh, Richard oh, and I you guys are – Oh, I'm still are, concerned about him, you know. And sure. I watched – I knowed where he was at, and I'm pretty sure he knowed – what my situation Y'all kept was. tabs with each other. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, I know a little bit about cars, so believe me when I tell you that tire pros, they're the real deal. They've got great people, great service, and they can take care of all your automotive maintenance needs. Plus, they're a sponsor of this show, so you know they got great taste in podcasts. So check out Tire Pros. Follow them on Facebook and tell them that I sent you.